the divine shepherd. The divine shepherd. So if there is someone who can help me put the reading on the screen, I would be grateful. And before we do that, and let us sing the song, It is so sweet to trust in Jesus. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus. Bear with me a moment. What number is it, sister? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. 524. Thank you, dear. Thank you very much, sister. Five two four. Did you say five two four? Yeah, thank you. Five two four. Five two four. Exactly, Cynthia. Would you like to lead us, please? Yes. Good morning. Five two four. It has four verses. We'll take the first. Only one for the second verse. I'll do the second verse. Thank you. Only one for the third verse. I'll do the third. Oh, you can go, Sister Abby. Okay. And I'll do number four. Uh, thank you. Five, two, four. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus Just to take him at his word Just to rest upon his promise just to know, thus saith the Lord, Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I prove him more and all. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Oh, how sweet to trust in Jesus, just to trust his cleansing blood, just in simple faith to plunge me neath the healing cleansing flood. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust in how I proved him all I know. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Yes, it is sweet to trust in Jesus, just from sin and self to cease. Just from Jesus, simply take him life and rest and joy and peace. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him more and all. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. I'm so glad I learned to trust thee. Praise us, Jesus, Savior, friend. And I know that thou art with me. Wilt be with me till the end. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him. How I've proved him all in all. 
Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust you more. Amen. Amen. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus. Let's pray. Father in heaven, as we open the reading, we pray for the presence of your Holy Spirit. And I pray that everything that will be discussed here will be Holy Spirit led and will be strengthened and encouraged by your love for us. In Jesus name we pray and thank you. Amen. Okay, those who have joined us, our study this morning is from the Desire of Ages, chapter 52, titled The Divine Shepherd. And yesterday, we, we saw that Jesus knows us by his name, by our names, and he leads us. He is our shepherd. Is a faithful shepherd, the good shepherd. And when we hear his voice, we follow him. And we also had many comments from people. There are so many voices. So we are to learn more about Jesus and be able to distinguish the difference between the voice of the enemy and Jesus' voice. So when we follow him, uh, he is leading us all the way. All the way our Savior leads us. That should be our song. All the way my Savior leads me. What have I got to fear? So we have nothing to fear because all the way our Savior leads us. So the previous paragraphs that we we read, which uh, uh, someone, thank you very much, has put on the screens, I don't think we had many many comments on it because of time. So there may be someone who want, who had something to comment. Uh, it's your turn if, if you're there and you want to comment. Anyone? You know, I, I just love the fact that Jesus knows those who hear his voice. He knows those who are his. And this is what we need to hold on to. He knows us by name. And for us, we must have a personal relationship with Jesus one by one because he knows us. He doesn't say he knows us by our names. He says that he knows those who are his by name. So we can see it's personal. So does Jesus know me by my name? Do I obey him? If we obey Jesus, he knows us by name. But if we just are professed Christians and we do not have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, he doesn't know us. He will say to us, depart from me, for I never knew you, ye workers of iniquities. I pray that none of us will hear those awful um, words uh, from Jesus. Aline and Linda, please go ahead. No, it's just Aline. Oh, it's just Aline. Sorry, it's just Aline. Please <laughs> go ahead. Okay. That's okay. Good morning. Um, yes, as you're saying that, you know, we must have a personal relationship with Jesus so that um, we know his, his, his voice. We can hear because there is, is so much confusion in this world and there's so much voices, so much noise, so much background noise that we can be thinking that we are hearing the voice of God, but hearing the voice of the enemy. And, you know, it says many refuse to be drawn to him. Many that refuse to be drawn to him are those who harden their hearts, those who um who 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 do not want to to um you know put down their the, the things of this earth, the things of this world, 
to come to Jesus because they're enjoying themselves, they're entertained. But Jesus said, I know who you are. I know who you are, those who are workers of iniquity. The ones who do not want to come to Jesus. Jesus never promised that his cross would not get heavy. And yeah. we have to bear our cross, yes? But he will take us through the fire. He will take us through, yeah? So we do not have anything to fear. So those who are not, who are refusing to um, to come to Jesus, you know, in the end, they are going to be ashes under the soles of your feet. And no matter how many times you tell them, you know, they just harden their heart even more. But I pray that we all listen to the voice of God um, and be like Abraham who knew God's voice, who knew his voice and, and did what God says or else he would have slayed his son. Yeah, thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Sister Alin, for emphasizing about these voices. Yesterday you emphasized that as well. And now again, you are speaking about many voices. We are to be like Abraham. Because if we hear the wrong voice, we are going to make the wrong choices because we are not listening. Let me tell you, Satan has got many ways of distracting us. You know, allow me to comment on the current issues that started with uh, Dr. Conrad Vine. There are so many voices. Oh, leave the conference churches. Oh, stay on the board. This, this, and that. No. Individually, what does what is Jesus saying to you? You see, Satan wants us to be distracted. And I'm just thinking, these ministers, when do they get the time to read their Bibles, visit their church members? When do they get time to do the work, the pastoral work, which Jesus has given them? It's fighting, this going on, fighting and fighting. And the more we pray for them, the more they seem to carry on distracting us and, you know, trying to hear what one is saying to the other. Let me say something. The Lord, I believe the Lord has impressed me to mention this. Let us study the Bibles for ourselves and spirit of prophecy. This carry on that is going in God's church is not helping any of us. It is not. It is not of God. It is not of God. So let us be concerned about our own salvation. We don't have time to be listening to each and every argument that they're having with one another. Uh, Sister Matanga, please go ahead. And then did I see somebody else's hand. Yes. Can can uh, can the Tatley sisters just Going down with the, the next uh, paragraph, which we read, I wasn't able to comment on the, not this one, but the following one. We also read it yesterday. I think, I want to... I think it's Brother Desire that's sharing the screen. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> yes, yes, that one. Yes, that's, that's the one which I wanted to comment on. It says, the, I've loved, I have loved thee with everlasting love. Mm hmm Therefore, with with loving kindness, I've drawn thee. With loving kindness, I've drawn thee. He compels none to follow him. I draw them, he says, with cords of men and with bands of love. Um, this verse really, you know, is really telling us that Jesus does not force us to do anything. But if we look at what he has done and mm -hmm. we spend time like we are doing, uh, beholding and seeing his character, you, you automatically fall in love with that character. He, he does not force us like the enemy to do anything, but he wants us to understand what he has done for us how much he's loved us, how much he will go to the ends of the world to save us, how much the host of all angels are working 
for our salvation. If we can only understand that, that the, the main business in heaven right now is focused on this planet Earth for the salvation of men. And when he comes, the whole heaven is going to be emptied to come and take this. This small planet is, a, is a, it, they call it a spectacular to all the fallen worlds. So everything is concentrated on us. What love is that? What love is that? That everything else, every business has been set aside for us. And yet we find uh, other important things above, above Christ. We, we, I don't know, we look at ourselves and think we are not important. We, we think we are going through so many difficulties and whatever. What about all these things which are going around us uh, in heaven for our sake? That love to say, I love thee, I've loved thee with everlasting. When the king of the universe says, I've loved you with everlasting love, what more do we want? Sometimes even I don't understand myself. I said, I think, I think there's something wrong with me. Because if Christ loves me so much, why am I pursuing all that instead of 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 just enjoying to 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 best in the to to just bask in the in the Savior's love? And He will never forsake us. He's always assured us, and He's always assured us every day. There is a fear not. There are three hundred and sixty-five fear nots in the Bible. So every day, saying fear not. Because there is an everlasting love for us. I just wanted us to reflect on God's love. Reflect on the cross itself. Where you can see the, the love pouring for us. The blood pouring for us. The body lacerated for that love for us. And we cannot go wrong. Because if you are drawn to him with cords of love, it doesn't matter. Whoever says what, whatever, I know who loves me and I know who my love is well. If we can only give them back that love which is given us, then we are blessed. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Uh, Sister Kezia, yeah, um, keep on preaching, uh, preach to us and remind us one again and again of God's love towards us. Blessed as sure as Jesus is mine should be our song in our hearts. Tackley Twins and then Sister Charlene. Thank you. Yes, good morning. I was talking about the, thinking about the chords of love as well. Um, if you coax somebody or something, you know, you'll get more out of them than if you force them. If any force isn't of God, anything that tries to force you to do something, especially against your will, isn't of God. And I can remember um, uh, years ago um, we had a budgie. And, it's children. Uh, it's children, we had a budgie. And um, budgie regal, you know, bird. And um, and if you wanted it to have a bath, you'd get the water in a little dish. And then you'd, you'd put your fingers in and shake them so you get all the bubbles. And you could see it coming through, it drew that bird to the water so it would have a bath. But if you didn't bother about doing that, it wouldn't do it. You know, so you have to coax. <laughs> Coax, uh, if you coax people, you know, in the right way, you'll get a lot more out of them than if you try and force them. Uh, any, anybody, anybody who forces anybody is not of God. It's not of God. In he said it draws you with cords of love. It draws us with cords of love. Yeah. Amen. Very true. Jesus invites, Jesus draws with cords of love, Satan forces. He's about to lay his hand on us so that we can feel his hand. <laughs> the, the beast is about to, uh, to do that to God's children. Thank you for that, for that example that you have used, uh, Tackley Twins. Sister Shalin, please go ahead. Good morning. Thank you. I just uh, really enjoy the comments this morning. And what Sister Kezia was saying is so true. You know, the Lord loves us so much. And the, I was just thinking this morning that, the devil wants us to believe that our situation is hopeless sometimes, to give up and think, there's no hope. Why would I pray? There's no hope. We could get to that point where 
you know, things look so bad that we think, you know, there's, I'm so stuck, there's no hope. And, and we've got to keep praying. The Lord can change our situation within a second. We have to keep hoping. Of course, we have to carry our cross. But as Sister Kezia was saying so beautifully, we, we, this, we have a Savior. He wants to help us, but we need to reach out and ask him. Ask in faith and say, Lord, you know, we don't, we're not sure he will solve the situation, but we have to reach out in faith and trust that he can change. He is so powerful. He can change our situation. And I've seen so many times where I thought this, this can't be solved. And God has given me multiple solutions. I'm like, what? You know, so yeah, in these end times, we can have bad situations. It's going to get so bad where we might give up, give up hope, but we must not give up hope because our God is more powerful than anybody, than, than anything the devil can throw at us. So I was just thinking about that hope this morning. You know, sometimes we can maybe feel, feel sick and you think, oh, am I ever going to get better? Or what else are we going through? We must not ever give up hope because that's what the mm -hmm. devil wants. And uh, we've got to keep trusting in the Lord and claiming his promises. And he will be there for us no matter what happens. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Sister Sherlyn. You, we uh, claim the promises of God and we keep on pressing on the upward way. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Any further comments? Okay, I cannot see any hands. Okay, shall we read on? Let's uh, go down to the next paragraph, which starts with, it is not the fear of punishment. May I ask someone to read the next two paragraphs, please? It is not the fear of punishment. It is not the fear of punishment or the hope of everlasting reward that leads the disciples of Christ to follow him. They behold the Saviour's matchless love revealed throughout his pilgrimage on earth. From the manger of Bethlehem to Calvary's cross and the sights of him attracts, it softens, it subdues the soul. Love awakens in the heart of the beholders. They hear his voice and they follow him. As the shepherd goes before his sheep himself, encountering the perils of the way, so does Jesus with his people. When he put forth his own sheep, he goeth before them. The way to heaven is concentrated by the Saviour. Saviour's footprints. The path may lead. The path may lead. The path. The path. May we be may be steep and rugged, but Jesus has travelled that way. His feet have pressed down the cruel thorns to make the pathway easier for us. Every burden that we are called to bear, He Himself has borne. Amen. Thank you. Let's stop there for uh, for comments. So, Jesus has, has trodden that path before. It was not an easy road for him when he came from heaven. First of all, he left the joys of heaven, the commander-in-chief of all the, the angels in heaven, and he left his joys in heaven. He... he <laughs> He, he put aside the worship of the angels to come here. So what Jesus gave up for us, God gave us the best of heaven, Jesus Christ. And we should be forever grateful for what God did for us, uh, emptied heaven for our sakes. And as Sister Charlene was speaking, very encouraging words. You know, we may be sick. We may have all these other challenges in life. You know, Satan wants us to give up the blessed hope. He wants us to give up uh, the hope that we have in Christ that uh, will eventually give us eternal life and give us rest in Jesus and and heaven and all the beautiful uh, um, um, rewards that Christ has promised us. First of all, to see our Savior face to face will be the greatest joy. 
So Satan uh, wants to discourage us so that instead of running to Christ saying, this is my God, we have waited for him and he will save us, that we may run away and be destroyed by his brightness of his appearing with the wicked. Do we want that? I don't want that. And I pray that none of us wants that. Thank you so much. Any any thoughts? Any thoughts? Anyone? Uh, Sister Metron. Uh, and then Sister Matanga. And Tackley Twins. I don't know whether that's a new hand or an old hand. Please go ahead. Yes. Yes. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Sister Dorothy. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm so in encouraged and strengthened by the words that are sitting in the second uh, paragraph there that we read where it says um as as the shepherd goes before his sheep he himself first encountering the perils of the way so does jesus with his people amazing to know that uh, my challenges are not new to him. They mm -hmm. don't surprise him. And uh, he has already walked before me. What I go through, what I experience, Jesus has already seen that. And uh, he is a solution. So isn't that uh, encouraging, you know, when you when the enemy wants to speak lies to you, to us so often is he has come to speak lies to me. I'm talking about myself this morning here. So often he has come to speak lies to me, the devil. But uh, here is Jesus revealing himself to me right now. That uh, the path may be steep and rugged. Oh, yes, it is. But Jesus has traveled that way. Ah. What more do I need and what more do I want here? Because he himself, they said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He is the way. And so he knows the way. And he said, you know, if anyone wants to come after me, they must take up their cross and follow me. And so Jesus has given me a cross that is fitting me. It's like he took a, a, a tape measure. And he measured and say, yeah, Metron, <laughs> this one fits you. And that's yours. And so he knows how to work around your situation too this morning. As he knows how to work around my situation. And so for me, I, I, I'm encouraged this morning. That he, he already knows that the, 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 my pathway is so steep and rugged. Of course it is. It is threatening, very much threatening. But uh, he has already traveled that way. His feet have pressed down the cruel thorns <laughs> to make the pathway easier for me and for you. Every burden that we are called to be, he himself is born. I can only just say praise God and say thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for to me this morning. This is my comment. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sister Matron. Yes, we are to believe these words and believe what is written is the truth. It is written. So if Christ has written this for us and he is telling us who we are to him, he is telling us uh, that he knows us by our names. And he wants us to hear his voice to draw us closer to him. Then we believe it. Uh, there is a comment uh, on the sufferings of Christ where Ellen T. White says, in order to more fully realize the value of salvation, it is necessary to understand what it cost in consequence of limited views of the sufferings of the divine Son of God, many place a low estimate upon the great work of the atonement. 
that is so powerful. It is so true. Jesus wore a crown of thorns that we may wear a crown of life. He he bought our he bought us a very expensive garment, his garment of righteousness. And when he offers it to he offers it to us, we should want to to remove our filthy garment. You know, I like I like the way the, the Bible calls that garment, our filthy garments, they are filthy. Our righteousness is like filthy rags. So let's look to Jesus and live and accept. Lord, I accept it. Let's say, Lord, I accept your righteousness. Let it be our righteousness and accept it with gratefulness of heart. Because many a times we think that we can buy, we can do something to save ourselves. Nothing. Nothing can wash us, nothing can take away sin but the blood of Jesus Christ. So let us put our trust in him. He will save us and he will come to take us home. May we be encouraged this morning by these powerful uh, writings. Uh, Sister uh, Takli Twins and Sister Matanga, please go ahead. Yes, I was just thinking about, you know, he goes before us and smooths the way. Um, kings years ago when they were travelling they'd have pe the men would go before them and fill all the potholes in the, in the ground and uh, make everything nice and they could remember when uh, Princess Diana died she's buried three miles from where we live they went round you know they got the, the authorities and that they went round and cleaned everything up because the, it would be cut, the hearst would be coming through uh, a street near us uh, you know so you, you noticed how everything was spruced up and, uh, and made the way so it, it looked decent when I'm uh, uh, you know when they brought the hearse through, so it's that's what Jesus does for us. He clears the way for us, clears the thorns out the way, and um, you know we just if we follow him, like the sheep follow the shepherd, he, he clears the way before them. Yeah. You know, and um, yeah, yeah. Rather, you know, when uh, in these countries, uh, by biblical countries, the the sheep, the the shepherd uh, goes forward and the sheep follow, but here. The, the shepherd drives the sheep. He's almost beyond driving them. With the sheep and the yeah, dogs. With the sheep and dogs, yeah. And everything, yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, sheep, the shepherd drives the sheep. But this shepherd, the divine shepherd, he goes before us. Thank you so much for those comments, Sister Matanga. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Sister Dorothy. You know, when I was um, just listening to Sister Matron and reading this paragraph as well, when he puts forth his own ship, he goes before them. The way to heaven is consecrated by Savior's footprints. The mm -hmm. path may be steep and rugged, but Jesus has traveled that way. And his feet has pressed down the cruel thorns to make the pathway easier for us. Every burden that are called to bear, he has borne. He himself has borne. I could not help myself but to think about the vision which Sister White had about traveling to the city. You know, they started off with horses. They started off with all sorts of things, you know. And there's the way became uh, more and more difficult. They saw that they had to leave the horses. They saw that even right at the end, uh, the path was so narrow and they had to take off their shoes as well. They were now on their feet. And before they could swing over to the, to the uh, other side, they could not even, there was a gulf before them and they had to hold the, the ropes. Christ was now, had thrown these ropes of faith so that they can swing over. And I always say to, when things are hard, I say, Lord, I'm, I'm waiting for the rope to swing over. 
this this is now I, I don't I don't see the path here. If I come to the place where you are now dropping the the, the codes of, of faith so that I can swing over this handle. It's not going to be easy as we can see the time of trouble is coming. <laughs> as we can see the hunger. I'm looking at even I live close to a very big supermarket and I'm always observing and I can see the amount of things which are which are in there are not as much as what it used to be before. Sometimes even some of the um foodstuffs on the frozen side, they are so little and they used to overflow. So that means there's something going on there. And we know uh the the digital um thing has been okayed by you and so we are going to have one code which will have our passport, our banking, and the the whatever which we cannot uh, call otherwise our platform will be shut. So if you don't have the job, you will not have uh, the code. You you the bank will be waiting for you to show that so that they can combine that. So buy and selling has been set up in such a brilliant way. The enemy has worked in such a way that we we are not going to get out of it. So the codes, I mean, this is the time when what we are trading on a very, 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 very narrow. That time we'll be trading at a very, very narrow. We won't have shoes. We won't have food to eat. We, we have to live by faith. And as we can see that that to, for us to be on the road to go to heaven, it's not going to be easy. We are going to be tried beyond what we can even imagine. At the moment, we can see all these things getting into place, taking shape, taking, you know, the Sunday law taking shape as well. My brothers and sisters, is going to be a steep and a rugged way. But we know that Jesus is with us. And we know that he will drop those cords so that we can swing over. So we should not be scared, but we should be prepared. Our faith is going to be tested because there's no one who is going to, without exercising that muscle of faith, you cannot be in heaven. Our faith is going to be tested just like Abraham was tested. His faith was tested to the limit. So our faith will also be tested. Thank you so much. But we should always know that we have the everlasting love of Christ with us. If we forget that, then we will fail. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, uh Sister Kezia, for that, uh, those uh, comments. Yeah, we shouldn't be afraid. You know, fear is a terrible thing. When you think about what they are going to do to us, you just actually don't want to think about it because of fear, because we are scared, but we shouldn't be. We should trust Jesus, trust him. Only those who trust that he will see us through only those ones will be able to, to make it. So may Jesus throw those cords to us when it comes to that. And every day when things seem so dim, uh, prayer retreat, I believe that's probably some desire. And then Brother JB, please go ahead. Prayer retreat. We can't hear you. Sorry, I just wanted to unmute. Say good morning, good morning, uh, Mother. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for those powerful, powerful, powerful comments. Yes, I just wanted to uh, 
to go to the second paragraph there, uh, just to add it to those powerful comments that I already have been made. It says, um, the way to heaven is consecrated by the Savior's footprints. Um, then it says, the path may be steep and rugged, but Jesus has traveled that way. His feet have pressed down the cruel thorns to make the pathway easier for us. Now, it's just the bit that got me there is where he says, the way to heaven is consecrated by the Savior's footprints. I wonder what that means. Um, you know, whatever we are called to go through, um, he has already been. He's not that um, shepherd who is behind. He leads the flock, as it says in the previous paragraph. Um, so if we, by faith, in the moment of, uh, maybe in the moment of discouragement, um, I think it's a songwriter who wrote the song, is it uh, the song six? Uh, I can't remember whether it's six, two, three. Uh, the one that says, I will follow thee, my Savior, wheresoever thou goest. Um, the songwriter in that song also captures the fact that uh, even though I face death, you have died before and um, you are resurrected. So we know that the, the resurrection of the just is a fact because he himself died and he rose again. But when you're rejected, you know that he was rejected as well. Poverty, he was a man who had nowhere to lay his head. He was homeless. Hunger, whatever uh, uh, this life can throw at us, he has been through it. He was maligned. If you're called names, or some people, they get so angry when they're called names. But he was also called the Prince of Beelzebub. He was uh, the, the, the Pharisee that he cast demons by the Prince of Beelzebub. Now, what is it that we feel that uh, uh, is a strange thing? I think it's the Apostle Peter who says, you know, when you go through trials and difficulties, don't think that a strange thing has happened to you. Um, so the, the path is consecrated. I can just imagine um, what this statement is saying. You know, if you... If you have walked in the forest uh, before and maybe you have lost track uh, of where others have gone and then you see uh, the footprints, it's easy to see that uh, I'm not alone. The, 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 there's been somebody here and you can easily follow the track. So um, I, I think that is uh, very encouraging. Um, the devil, though, will make us feel like um, we, we are the only ones who have been here. But no, the Lord, our Lord, our, shepherd, our divine shepherd has been on this place before. And he says, um, follow my example. He has trodden the path before, and he overcame, and now we sat with the Father. So I think what an example. He, he leads the way. He demonstrates how to get victory. And all we do now is to follow his example by his grace. And we will be where he is if we follow carefully the example that he has set for us. Amen. Amen. Amen.
for comments there. Thank you very much. Yes, that song 623, the, the words are very, very encouraging. Though thou leadest me through affliction, poor forsaken, though I be, though was destitute, afflicted, and I only follow thee. So let us uh, trust Jesus. Let's trust him. He is with us regardless. Thank you. Uh, Brother JB, please go ahead. Uh, good morning. I think in the previous chapter, it says that his sheep hear his voice and they follow him. And then in this uh, chapter, it talks about the Savior leading, um, leading the sheep. And the fact that the Savior is leading the sheep, it means that there is, um, there is a requirement that something is required of the sheep because it's not the Savior pushing the sheep to go, but he's leading the sheep, which means the sheep has to exercise their right and their choice. And the lesson there is since he's leading, um, it's easy to say the Savior is leading the sheep. But the question should be, are the sheep willing um, to obey and follow him by faith? That is what is key. And that shows that God doesn't follow, force anybody uh, to follow him wherever or to worship him. None. The human being is, is a free moral agent. God or Satan cannot force anybody to follow them or to worship him. We make the choice. So we have to be mindful when we say uh, Satan forces people to do anything. Satan cannot force me to sin. Satan cannot force anybody to sin. God cannot force anybody to obey. So the human being is a free moral agent on earth, placed on earth to make a choice. Satan comes with suggestions. When we yield to those suggestions, and yes, we have sinned. But when we, that's why the scripture says, uh, when we reject Satan, uh, he will flee from us. Which means when we reject, reject the suggestions that he puts forward for us to sin, he will flee from us. So we reject and carry on rejecting. That is how we overcome. But there for me is a lesson of obedience. Are we willing to follow the Savior uh, wheresoever he goes? It's easy to even sing that song. But really in practical terms, are we, have we surrendered our hearts fully for us to obey and follow him or do we choose to, I mean, to, 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 to accept certain suggestions and then end up sinning? So a human being is always, is always uh, faced with making a choice. And this is my prayer that will allow uh, the Holy Spirit's promptings and for us to listen to the Holy Spirit when he speaks because when Satan comes with suggestions, the Holy Spirit says, no, don't do it. We then have to make a choice. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you for those comments, Brother JB. I was speaking about Satan forcing us physically, but not spiritually. I do agree with you. Satan does not force us to sin. We are tempted to sin just like he Jesus was tempted in the wilderness and he fought the spiritual war and he won. He resisted temptation. So we also can resist temptation. And, but when he has his hand out to persecute us, he forces and he lays his hand on us. We cannot escape from his force, his, his, his force because that's who he is. He forces God's children. He forces them. 
he dicta- he's a dictator, he's a tyrant, but Jesus draws us. Jesus draws the human family to himself. But Satan tempts people, puts things in their minds to distrust God. Thank you for those thoughts, Brother JB. And um, anyone else? Uh, Anyone else? Any further comment? I can't see anyone else. Okay. Shall we continue with the reading? Well, we have about seven minutes. Would anyone like to read the next the next two paragraphs? Sorry, um sister sister um Sister Dorothy. Um, yes. I was just thinking that, you know, sometimes we we hear um God calling us um to follow him. Yeah. And we're not sure if it is if it is the right voice that we're hearing. So we stand and we we linger and we we cogitate and we we chew over and we we turn aside and we think about it and we 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 do all manner of things instead of just going. And I think we all have a problem with with, with that um the lingering um the lingering with with um just standing there lingering and then you, you talk yourself out of something that was good and but it you've left it now because it's too late so you've gone that happens mm-hmm. to me that happens to me many times you know and then when i when it's gone it's it's too late you can't do anything so when you hear the voice of god speaking do I remember um I the you know I haven't spoken to a friend of mine for years and years and years and she was my best friend and I don't even remember what it was about and you know the spirit of the Lord said call her call her and I haven't called her and I feel that that time has passed because I've lingered and I've waited and I've cogitated in my mind and it, 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 it's passed. So the spirit is no longer telling me to call her, you know, because it was very strong to call her. But when Jesus is, the shepherd is speaking to you, we must listen and we must go because as it says, with loving kindness, I have drawn thee. Thank you. Mm-hmm. You, Sister Allen, that is so true. It's so true because we must train our minds to hear the voice of Jesus speaking to us because sometimes if we do not respond to the promptings of the Holy Spirit, or, uh, we will miss opportunities and we will regret it. When you are speaking there, you reminded me of the... Uh, the man who was given that message, um, but because he lingered and doubted, he was scared, he was fearful, he didn't want to speak because he, you know, of his unbelief that that was the voice of God speaking to him, and that was taken from him, and it was given to Ellen G. White. That came to my mind. You are so right. Let's pray that we may. Be discerning, discerning. Even your family. Sometimes you can be impressed, those of you who have got families abroad. If God impresses you to call them, don't wait until they call you. It may be too late when you call them. And you wish you just had uh, that last conversation with them. Thank you very much, Sister Arlene, for, for that. Any more comments? We've got three minutes. We are coming to a close. Uh, anyone with a final comment before? I think we'll leave it here yeah. and we can continue tomorrow. 
Yeah, I was mm -hmm. just going to add on to what you were saying, sister, about uh, uh, the vision which had been given to um, that. There were two men, actually. One of them um, was a black man. I can't remember his name. Um, I wrote them somewhere. Force. And, and he, Floyd or something? I can't. Force, uh, I think his name was. Yeah. And he thought, he, he thought, I mean, being a, a, from a, a, a black a background, he thought people will not believe him. And also then it was given to this man who, another man, and he also thought uh, he he was he, he was scared, you know. But you know, all things work well. So when when Sister White then was given the the revelation uh, of you know of Christ when she was given these visions now, these two men confirmed that they had been given the same vision, but they were scared to talk. So, you know, in a way, that was a confirmation for, for, for also people and Sister White that this, these visions are coming from, from God. Because if, if the same vision had been given to these two previous men and the same vision is now coming through here, definitely it's God who is trying to work, uh, who is working with her. And people believed it because the man confirmed that yes, I was given that vision, but I refused to uh to go with it. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Kezia, for uh giving us a little bit in depth of, of, of that. Thank you so much. Thank you. I see Sister Ruby. Yes, it will be very, see... very brief. Good morning, everyone. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to say it's so important. Um, several people mentioned about being able to recognize the voice of our shepherd. That is, is so important. Um, and But also, how do we learn to recognize the voice of Jesus? We can't do it on our own. We can't just do it. It just, it doesn't. We don't just know the voice of our shepherd just because we are his sheep. It doesn't come automatically. We have to have that relationship and it has to be constant. Uh, we have to be uh, um, going over his words daily. We have to be praying daily. And also when we're praying as well, it's a uh, communication. That means we don't just go and just ask for things or just say things without hearing back because it's a conversation even during our prayers we have to be hearing back from from Jesus while we're praying and also um, importantly we need to, to ask the Holy Spirit to help us to be able to recognize the voice of God because Satan is a great imitator and he can imitate um the good shepherd as well so and we know that um what happened to jesus when he was um after his um 40 days of fasting what happened he came as an angel of light he can do it again so may the lord help us to seek to to always know um the voice of our good shepherd and so that we can follow him thank you Thank you, Sister Ruby. Kindly, I pray to, to close. If anyone had any thoughts, uh, please bring them tomorrow morning. Uh, otherwise, uh, we will stop here. Sister Ruby, kindly close. Pray to close. Thank you. Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for this blessed hour of reading and discussing your present and your precious truths. Father, I thank you for all the wonderful comments that you have put in the minds of your people through your Holy Spirit. I thank you, Lord Jesus. This is a wonderful privilege that we have. Lord, I pray uh, most importantly that you will help us, Lord Jesus, to be able to recognize your voice so that we are not led astray by the master deceiver. 
Father God, as we go from here now, I pray, O oh God, that your Holy Spirit will linger with us. I pray, O oh God, that you will help each and every one of us here to have a blessed and a productive day. Thank you again, Lord Jesus, for the leading of your Holy Spirit. And uh, thank you for hearing and answering our prayer. Forgive us, Lord Jesus, of all our sins and cleanse us from all our unrighteousness, I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much for the prayer. And thank you, everyone, for your presence, availing yourself so that we can study the word of God together. And surely the Lord has fed us this morning. A starter is like the main meal, the dessert, everything. We just like, I can feel the appetite of eating God's word this morning from your voices as you were speaking. So we want to praise God for that. <clears throat> Thank you very much. I'll hand over now to some desirable announcements. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mother Dorothy, for leading out this morning. And thank you, brethren, for joining in, as always. A uh, powerful study. There's a lot to think about as we go out about the day. Um, just to remind you, there'll be midday prayers, as always, from 12 to 1. And in the evening, we have uh, Brother Robert this week. Uh, the theme that he's uh, presenting on uh, is called Justified by Love. Uh, yesterday, those of you who joined, we had a powerful message on health message. It was a health message. So it was sharing from uh, the Bible and Spirit of Prophecy, the importance of the health message uh, to our physical, mental, and spiritual well-being. So um, please do invite others as well to join in the evenings. God bless you, brethren. Keep... Uh, in mind also the dates for the prayer retreat from the 23rd to the 29th. Let's meet at Kefunli. Uh, the charges are still the same as last year's uh, for the adults and for the children. So um, uh, if you uh, plan to come, please, uh, uh, this is the time to start uh, making plans and uh, setting aside the money and probably set aside some money to bring somebody else as well along. God bless you, brethren. Have a wonderful day. Amen. Amen.